pretty much in his account, he's talking about how he's he's uh, having a party, his retirement party from the Marines. And then he talks about how uh, I'll give another account um, at this time. And this is during the party. At this time, a car drove up and four white Marines started throwing hand grenades. They were white phosphorus. Threw one right through my station wagon, threw another at this lady's Cadillac. Guess they thought this was my Cadillac. And they threw another into one of the house. They threw another one into the house, and another one hit the Marine emblem on my gate. And everything was lit up like a Christmas tree around here. A white friend of mine saw them. He took off, he took off at a high speed, and he did get that tag number. And some of the state troopers came out here and helped me put some of the fire out. The Marine Corps never did nothing to them at all. Three of them got transferred or discharged, although they were supposed to be pending an investigation. Um, basically, they didn't do nothing to these guys, but uh, Sergeant Major Huff got in, t got in touch with one of those guys and he called his, his father and was like, look, the guy's father said, look, I don't want your son to go to jail. I just want reimbursement. I want money to, to secure the damages that I had to fix. And, um, yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> just thinking about this man served his nation with a lot of bravery, valiant. And then to come home and, and to have people from his own Marine Corps attack him on the on, on, on a sacrosanct day, on a sanct on, on a sacrosanct day, his retirement. You know, like what what the fuck? Excuse my language, mom. Um, but yeah, and then later on uh, in his account, he just talks about how growing up in Alabama and how essentially dealing with the Ku Klux Klan. He was he talk, he gives an example of how a guy he knew, uh, who I guess he had a fair skin or wife. And the white guys wanted her, so they wanted to kill this guy so they could get his wife. And he talks about how they pulled him out, they whipped him, but he survived. And then he go, then he started, the, the gentleman survived and he, and he came back. You know, then he talks about how uh, essentially dealing with the Klan, the trauma from dealing with the Klan, it actually prepared him for Vietnam. <laughs> it prepared him for Nam. Um... Uh, Again, uh, it's like Dr. John Henry Clark said. I know I quote Dr. John Henry Clark a lot. One of the the greatest soldiers in the world is a black man. <laughs> you know, just the different things that we incur. Um, you know, we're not always necessarily as disciplined as we, as we should be. or But, you know, a lot of things factor into that. But as far as just strength, bravery, we got it. We got it. Um... This is a great book. I think every black man should read it. Uh, I had a very hard time finishing this book. Uh, I cried a lot when I read this book. Uh, just just seeing how the narrative has not shifted, you know, from black men being hated, uh, black men being demonized, uh, black men always being contextualized as being wayward and villainous. Yet, uh, you know, we 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 I guess like despite all that, people feel like they can just treat us any kind of way and. And irrespective of all that, we're supposed to be so kind and meek and merciful to everybody else, and even when our humanity is even even not even when our humanity is not even acknowledged. Um, but yeah, this is compulsory reading. I think every black man should read this book. Um, gives great perspective. Um, and I think it's interesting how you know you have some people say like, "How can you be proud of this country? We fought for this country." You know, I got I got relatives in my family that died in Vietnam, that died defending this country. I'm not going nowhere. I'm an American. I'm proud to be an American. Uh, things need to change, you know. Um, but I'm not I'm not I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I'm here here to stay. Uh, but yeah, like, share, comment, subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel Eighty Two Kings. Follow the movement on Instagram at MacTV underscore Eighty Two. Again, Eighty Two Kings YouTube channel. Peace and love to all. We're going to make it. We're going to get through this pandemic cycle. Uh, white supremacy is on the clock. Your time is up. Your time is up. Everything's coming to a head. Uh, again, peace and love to all. Shout out to uh, all my white allies, all my Latino allies that, that see white supremacy for what it is and the bullshit that it is. Um, yeah, appreciate you. But signing off from the Dogon. Oh, one more thing. Watch out for that mixtape. No, not, 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 not the mixtape. The project. It's a project, not a mixtape. Um, Social Distancing Lights on Toilet Paper. Produced by Franco, produced by DJ Cass. With the bars from yours truly, Mr. Warbucks. First single is Lights on Toilet Paper. It will be coming out shortly, soon, soon, on all streaming platforms. Yeah, but peace and love to all.
Signing off from the Dogon. Be safe. Wash your hands. Social distance.